blood cells begin their life in the bone marrow of pluripotent hematopoietic stem cell. The division of pluripotent hematopoietic stem cell form different circulating blood cells. The first cell that can be identified is proerythroblast. The proerythroblasts are formed from the colony forming unit of erythrocytes. When these proerythroblasts are filled with 34% of hemoglobin and their nucleus condensed to the small size and the endoplasmic reticulum is reabsorbed, then they become the reticulocytes. The reticulocytes are immature red blood cells and each day 1 to 2 percent of reticulocytes exchange with the mature red blood cell. The reticulocytes contain small amount of basophilic material. So the reticulocyte leaves the bone marrow and enter into the bloodstream by the process called diapadesis. It means they squeeze through the pores of the capillaries. In blood, the basophilic material disappears within one or two days because of the short life of reticulocytes. Now the red blood cell which transport oxygen to the tissue. If the oxygen level in the tissue is decreased, then the erythropoietin will stimulate the production of proerythroblast. Factor which decrease the tissue oxygenation is anemia, low hemoglobin and low oxygen supply. Normally 90% of erythropoietin is formed in kidney and 10% in liver. In response to hypoxia, the interstitial cell in peritubular capillaries of kidney releases the erythropoietin, which stimulates the production of proerythroblast. In time, hypoxia in other parts of the body, but not in kidney, which stimulate the erythropoietin secretion from the kidney. The epinephrine, norepinephrine, the prostaglandin stimulate the erythropoietin production. When a person is placed in low oxygen state, the erythropoietin formed within a minutes and hours, but red blood cell will not appear until five days. From this we can determine the importance of erythropoietin. So the rapid production of the cell continue as long as the person remain in the low oxygen state. If a person is living in a high altitude, so the kidney and liver releases high amount of erythropoietin, which increase the red blood cell and hemoglobin production. But if a person having chronic renal failure, it means there is a gradual loss in kidney function over the time. So we can give supplemented erythropoietin but it also causes hypertension. Red blood cell. Volume of red blood cell is 40 to 45 percent. pH is 7.4. Their lifespan is about 120 days. Density is 1050 to 1060 gram per liter. The freezing temperature is 0 0.55 degrees centigrade. The function is to transport oxygen and carbon dioxide and they are buffering in acid-base homeostasis. The process to produce the red blood cell is called erythroporosis. In the early week of embryonic life, the primitive nucle nucleated red blood cell begin their production in yolk sac. And from the 6th week till 28th week or until birth, they are produced in liver and spleen. And in from 18th week until adulthood, they are produced in the bone marrow. Bone marrow is a soft spongy tissue within a spongy cancellous bone. The bone marrow is composed of stromal cell and stem cell. The stromal cell do not participate, but they play a critical role in maintaining and regulating the process. The flat bone like sternum, pelvic bone, vertebra, skull, scapula, they are mainly hematopoietic. But the long bone like tibia, femur, humerus, they are not hematopoietic. So the bone marrow of all the bones made red blood cell except long bone because they are quite fatty.
Formation of hemoglobin. The synthesis of hemoglobins began in proerythroblast and continued in reticulocytes. When the reticulocyte leaves the bone marrow and enter into the bloodstream, where they form a small amount of hemoglobin for another day or until they become the mature red blood cell. The basic chemical step in formation of hemoglobin is first succinyl coenzyme A formed in the Krebs cycle binds with the glycine to form pyrrole. When four pyrrole combine, they form protoforpyrin 10. We will discuss the protoforpyrin synthesis in sideroblastic anemia because the lead inhibits the second and final stage of protoforpyrin synthesis. Now the protoforpyrin 10 binds with iron to form heme molecule. Finally, each heme molecule combined with a long polypeptide chain, a globin synthesis by ribosome forming subunits of hemoglobin called hemoglobin chain. There are several slight variations in different subunit chain depends on amino acid composition of polypeptide portion. These chains are alpha, beta, gamma and delta. The most common hemoglobin in human adults is hemoglobin A, which is a combination of two alpha and two beta chain. The abnormality of these chains can change the physical characteristic of hemoglobin molecules. For example, in sickle cell anemia, the amino acid well in substitute with the glutamic acid at one point of beta chain. The primary function of hemoglobin is to bind with oxygen in lung and releases this oxygen into peripheral tissue. The destruction of red blood cell. When the red blood cell burst, they release the hemoglobin and then this hemoglobin is phagocytosed by macrophages in cover cell and the macrophages of spleen and bone marrow. In few days, the macrophages release the iron from hemoglobin and pass it back into the blood and then carried by transferrin to the bone marrow or liver and stored in form of ferritin. The porpyrin portion of hemoglobin is converted by macrophages through a series of stages into bile pigment called bilirubin and released into the blood and later removed from the body by secretion through liver into the bile. Normally, RBC is destroyed in spleen. In blood, albumin binds with unconjugated bilirubin to form unconjugated bilirubin albumin complex. Now, bilirubin uptake by the liver with glucuronic acid and in gut, they are converted into conjugated bilirubin and then converted into urobilanogens. This urobilanogen is excreted in feces and the rest of it goes to the liver and kidney which is excreted in urine as urobilin. Iron transport and storage. Iron is important for formation not only for hemoglobin but also for the myoglobin, cytochromes, cytochrome oxidase. The total quantity of iron in the body is 4 to 5 grams, out of which 65% is in form of hemoglobin and 4% in form of myoglobin. When iron is absorbed from small intestine, it combines with the beta globulin apotransferrin to form transferrin, which is then transported into the plasma. This iron is loosely attached to the transferrin and can be released at any point in the body. The excess iron is deposited into the liver hepatocytes and the less number is in reticulocyte cell in the bone marrow. In cytoplasm, the iron combines with the apotransferrin to form the ferritin. The ferritin only contains small or large amount of iron. The iron stored in form of ferritin is called storage iron. So iron is absorbed and transferred to the plasma and then to the tissue 
in the storage pool there is a large amount of iron which is extremely insoluble form it's called hemocytin this hemocytin collects in the cell in form of large cluster and can be observed with the microscope as large particle and in contrast the ferritin are small particle and can only be seen in with the electron microscope when the quantity of iron in the plasma falls low some of the iron in ferritin storage pool is removed and transported in form of transferrin in the plasma and in the body where it needs and mainly to the mitochondria where the heme is synthesized if a person do not have adequate amount of transferrin in the blood there is a failure to transport iron to the erythroblast and it called hypochromic anemia where rbc's contain less amount of hemoglobin than normal maturation of red blood cell vitamin b12 and folic acid is important for the final maturation of red blood cell both are essential for the synthesis of dna lack of any of these cause abnormal or diminished dna or failure of the nuclear maturation and cell division the deficiency of b12 and folic acid cause the maturation process of erythropoiesis because erythroblastic cell of the bone marrow produce cell larger than the normal red blood cell which is called macrocytes the pernicious anemia is the failure to absorb b12 from the gastrointestine causing red blood cell maturation failure in which the basic abnormality is atrophic gastric mucosa fails to produce the gastric secretion and the gi abnormality for the folic acid absorption is called sprue